Back Rooms is an urban legend and creepypasta that tells the tale of an endless maze of randomly generated office rooms. It is characterized by the smell of wet carpet, walls with a monochromatic tone of yellow, and buzzing fluorescent lights. Although internet users have expanded upon this concept by creating different levels and entities of the back rooms, the original version came from a two-paragraph comment on an online forum post that was asking for unsettling images. So this anonymous user invented this story based on one of the photos that was posted. And this is what the original post said. If you're not careful and you no clip out of reality in the wrong areas, you'll end up in the back rooms, where it's nothing but the stink of old moist carpet, the madness of mono yellow, the endless background noise of fluorescent lights at the maximum hum buzz, and approximately 600 million square miles of randomly segmented empty rooms to be trapped in. God save you if you hear something wandering around nearby because it sure as hell has heard you. And since its original creation, the back rooms have been expanded into various forms of media and internet culture, including video games, YouTube videos, I believe there's even like a found footage film, because people have just been so intrigued by this concept. So let's talk about what happens inside the back rooms. The back rooms exist in an unknown location, time, and reality, and to get there, a person needs to be glitched or clipped out of the real world, and it's unknown how and why people do that. Apparently, if you arrive in the back rooms with your phone, you won't be able to send messages or call anybody for help. Your phone has no reception and it's just unable to work properly. And this place is known to drive people completely insane because it just induces this helpless feeling because you're trapped in an infinite maze with no exit or no way out. Apparently, when you arrive in the back rooms, you start off on level zero. And yes, there are tons and tons of levels. It has a bunch of creatures and entities that call the back rooms their home, and they are not animals from this earth. In fact, they are very powerful and very dangerous. And there are so many different entities on each level that someone could make a crazy amount of videos just talking about each creature. And I believe there are YouTube channels just dedicated to doing this, which is really cool. And I have not had time to research each and every creature because I wanted this first video to be mainly about what the back rooms are and give you like a general overview. And I'm still learning myself, like I said. But if you do want me to do a creature video, comment down below and I can try and do that. But I've heard about things that look like humans that crawl upside down on their hands and legs and they apparently grunt and growl with these horrifying smiles. There was a creature called facelings and smilers and skin stealers and death moths. And like I said, the list goes on and on. I feel like I need to take an entire course on the back rooms. <laughs> and you may be wondering how the heck do you eat or drink in this endless maze? Apparently there's food sort of scattered around in different rooms on different levels. There's food like energy bars and salads and something called royal rations. And they're normally safe to eat, but not always. There's also something called almond water to drink, which is this very sweet liquid that quenches your thirst and appeases your hunger. It also helps to calm your anxiety from the insanity that the back rooms bring. And apparently the back rooms can only be escaped by incredibly difficult means. And I need to do more research on that to find out how. Like I said, this video doesn't even break the surface. So let's talk about some of the levels. Like I said, there are hundreds of levels. And just to give you an idea about how they work, I'm going to briefly talk about levels 0 to 2. But once again, many videos could be made about each and every level. So let me know if you want me to do a video on that as well. Like I said, just comment if you want to hear more about the back rooms after this because I could make a mini series. And by the way, it's sort of a mystery about how you get from one level to the next. For example, you could be on level 0 and see a door and if you walk in, you could be teleported to level 19. The back rooms don't have normal rules of physics and you know how normally things would work here on Earth. So let's start with level zero, which I did briefly talk about already. The level depicted in the original Backrooms photo, which features all of the creepypasta's most well-known characteristics like moldy carpet, monochromatic yellow walls, and buzzing fluorescent lights. And one of the entities created by users for this level are called hounds, which are described as disfigured and manic humanoid beings, which would obviously be very terrifying to come across. And then we have level one, a level reached when one wanders around level 
level zero for days. It is darker than level zero and features a more industrial architecture with mechanical like sounds being heard through the place. And the level appears to be a dark, dingy warehouse with low lying fog and puddles of water around. And opposed to level zero, the fluorescent lights begin to flicker more frequently, occasionally even shutting down completely. And there's this quote that says, this is when the beings come out. So I guess this is when you see more creatures, which is also very terrifying. I mean, this whole entire back rooms idea is just so unsettling. After I did research for this video, I literally had dreams about it. <laughs> okay, and then we have level two. It is one of the darkest levels containing more industrial-like architecture, and this level appears as long service tunnels with pipes lining the walls. It is described as being reached when one simply wanders around level one for a long enough period of time, and it features a much higher temperature than other levels. Survivors of the back rooms claim that the only way to escape this level is to remain calm, stating that only when the back rooms have become your home can you depart. Okay, so let's start off with our first creatures and they are called Smilers. Smilers are hostile entities recognizable by their signature glowing reflective eyes and gleaming sharp teeth. These entities only appear in dark corners or doorways where the rest of their form is not visible. Now sightings of these creatures are the most common in the back rooms and people have said that they don't have bodies, they only have their really creepy glowing face because the shadow itself acts as their body. Although it is rumored by other people that they have non-human alien-like bodies. Arms and legs that are bent in unnatural ways, but we just can't see them because they're always shrouded in the darkness. The first known image that was taken of a Smiler was back in 2009, which is the image that you're looking at right now. And apparently Smilers are attracted to light and will chase after anything even remotely bright. They will literally lunge at any light source that they see. So it is said that you should never turn on a flashlight in front of a Smiler or they will lunge at you. Smilers are typically passive creatures, but sudden noises or motion from panicking or retreating will make them highly aggressive. So no flashlights, no lights at all. And if you happen to see one, don't panic and start flailing your arms and running away. You gotta be slow about it. You gotta keep your cool. There is advice on how you can escape one. It is said that if you come across one, you need to stare it down while you retreat and you need to make sure that you do not blink in the process because if you close your eyes, look away, blink, that is when they come for you. And then similarly, there are creatures called frowners. Frowners are typically docile entities that are similar to smilers. They are recognizable for their signature reflective eyes and gleaming teeth and appear to be between six to 10 feet tall. They are speculated to have these long, sharp horns, extruding from their head, along with long claws that are shrouded in the dark. And they appear in dark corners, dark doorways. So just like Smilers, you can't see entirely what they actually look like because you only see their glowing face. But these ones are frowning. And the first known image of a frowner was taken in 2010, which is this image that you're looking at right here. And if frowners are provoked or seen as a threat, they too will turn aggressive and exit their docile state. And it is unknown whether a frowner can re-enter their docile state after they have exited it. So caution is definitely advised while you're near them because once they become crazy and go after you, they're just, they're gonna stay that way. Now what's interesting is that frowners do not like smilers and they're incredibly hostile towards them. They also possess a unique ability to convert smilers into them by gouging out their eyes with their claws. And you'll know that you're looking at a converted smiler because it will be constantly glitching. So they like recruit smilers and turn them into frowners which is interesting. Then we have creatures called party goers. The party goers are tall creatures with rough and leathery skin, typically tinted a dull yellow. They have no other functional features with the exception of a cartoonish smile drawn onto their face with a substance resembling human blood and their heads almost look like a paper bag as well. Now these party goers are said to be highly intelligent and are sometimes spotted operating complex machinery and traversing the back rooms 
looking for prey. What's creepy is that most of these creatures do not venture alone. They often tend to hunt in groups, so if you see one, there's most likely a lot behind them. They hide in the shadows of their habitat levels and wait for prey to pass. And I think the scariest part of this whole thing is that when they spot you, they begin singing nursery rhymes to draw you in. So they'll start singing songs that you used to hear as a kid as sort of like this nostalgic factor that piques your attention and makes you want to follow the song. And the song they're singing has this supernatural property that tires and numbs their prey so that they can sprint towards them to attack. The victim is then transformed into a party goer themselves and they lose all human memory. So they attack their victims and they turn into party goers, which is really creepy. Party goers are capable of building cover. So if you're ever walking through the back rooms and you see stacked furniture items like stacked couches, stacked chairs, they are most likely hiding behind those things. Party goers also leave bottles of almond water around their ambush zones as bait, hoping their prey bends over to get it and does not notice them at first. Now there is a backrooms level called level fun and level fun is considered the main habitat for the party goers, but there's not much to be known about this level just yet. Most to all information regarding level fun has been edited or destroyed by party goers to make it appear as safe, thereby luring prey into the level. The real entrances are likely hidden as a trap for unlucky wanderers. Now level fun looks so creepy and I would love to learn more about it, hence why I want to make a bunch of videos on the different backrooms level because this level looks so nostalgic, like it looks like a birthday party that you would have went to as a kid and it has that like unsettling eerie vibe to it. There's something so creepy about an empty dim party room. So yeah, I want to do videos on each level because they just keep getting weirder and weirder. It reminds me of like Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory or something. You know how each room of his there was something different? That's like the levels of the back rooms, except make it way scarier. Then we have facelings. Facelings are a general term for faceless people that roam the back rooms. There are multiple types, each with varying levels of hostility, and they are one of the most populous entities in the back rooms and likely one of the first entities that you might encounter. So there's different ones. There are adult facelings, and these have the appearance of a standard adult, except they obviously have no facial features. They can appear as male, female, whatever, and they either wear very formal clothing or they adapt their clothing depending on which level they're on. And then there's the child facelings, and these ones are very mischievous and hostile, and they often appear in groups of two or three. Imagine stumbling across a group of little kids with no faces in the back rooms, and they love to torment and they attempt to kill any back rooms wanderer that they find. What's interesting is that child facelings are most oftenly female, and they're always holding these small sharp items in their hands. These could be small pieces of sharp metal, knives, whatever really. But what's interesting is that if they are being hostile towards you, apparently if you comfort them by touch, they will fall asleep and get distracted so you can get away. So if you go up to them and you're like, they're there, and you like pat their back, they're just gonna fall asleep. Then we have the old man facelings. These facelings apparently walk around with a cane. They have wrinkles, but still no facial features. They are very slow and apparently very harmless, which is good. But if you ever stumble across one in the back rooms, they will attempt to check you out, as it says. So they will come up to you and touch your face and your body. They're trying to figure out who you are because they can't see. And apparently if you don't want them to do that, all you have to do is quickly walk away. They're way too slow to follow you. And then lastly, we have skin stealers. Skin stealers are large humanoid entities that can wear the skin of their victims as a disguise. They eat human flesh when in a hunger state and otherwise roam if they do not need to eat. Apparently their outer layer of skin is covered in microscopic bumps similar to an octopus. And these stick to the skin that was torn off humans and they push and pull to make the skin fit on them until this skin stealer looks identical to a human. These bumps apparently also pump blood and nutrients into the skin to make it look warm and alive and to make sure that it doesn't decompose. And after a period of about 24 hours, the skin will be digested through the surface of the skin stealer and then he'll enter a docile state and then get hungry and have to go and find another human. Now a skin stealer can speak, but it can't understand our language. It just repeats what it hears by real humans. It sort of just mimics them. And that's how 
how it lures in the prey, but it can't like actively communicate. And apparently the blood of a skin stealer is completely translucent. So a good way to identify a skin stealer from a normal human is by their blood. There's a quote that says, blood runs red, they're not dead. Blood runs clear, get out of here. Okay, let's get right into today's video talking about level three of the back rooms. This level is called electrical station. Level three consists of thin brick hallways and electrical machinery. There are also many pipes that line the walls and the ceilings. And there's actually contaminated almond water that leak from these pipes and they create these puddles on the floor. And there's this warning saying that you should not drink this water. Some of the hallways on this level are so narrow that they require you to bend or hunch or crawl through them. And people that have ventured through this level say that it's extremely claustrophobic. There are even exposed wires that sometimes dangle down from the ceilings or out of the walls. Obviously, these would be very dangerous as well. What's also really unsettling is that as you're wandering through this level, you'll hear these loud sounds of machinery coming from different rooms around you. And these unknown machines appear to be providing providing energy to unknown locations. Automated doors can even be found throughout this level and will slam shut and lock at random intervals. And this seems to happen more frequently if an entity is present. So this entity could literally lock you inside certain rooms with them. Now, while you're on this level, you may see creatures like facelings, skin eaters, stalkers. And stalkers are mysterious entities with glowing eyes that roam around the back rooms. And these entities can actually have different colored eyes depending on their behavior. So apparently green-eyed stalkers are very passive and if you go up to them and touch one, it will actually transport you into level 550. Blue-eyed stalkers are super rare and most likely won't harm you if you see them. But red-eyed stalkers are extremely aggressive and if you touch one, you'll begin to hallucinate and you'll have this sudden urge to start crying. Apparently you'll also start to feel this huge amount of pain that won't go away until you exit the level. Okay, and then we have level four, and this one is called Abandoned Office. Level four appears to be an empty office building completely devoid of furniture. Certain rooms in this level have windows, but all should be considered traps and avoided at all costs. And because of the lack of beings, many wanderers naturally congregate on level four. And scattered around this level, there are water coolers, water fountains, and vending machines containing almond water. So level four is considered to be a pretty safe place for wanderers to gather together, stock up on supplies, rest. It's basically a safe zone where you can kind of gather yourself before continuing on to the next level. And like I said, this level is just devoid of any entities. So you don't need to be constantly paranoid about something watching you or about to get you. It is also said that if you see a stairway or elevator on this level, it's most likely an exit to level five. So yeah, out of most levels, level four is a place that you can feel safe. Okay, then we have level five and this one is called the hotel. Now this level is so intricate and detailed with so many creepy things to mention, so get ready. This level is pretty much an infinite hotel complex with many rooms and halls. The level seems to take place in the 1930s and there are three three main areas that you can wander through. The areas are called the main hall, the Beverly room, and the boiler room. Now the Beverly room is also called the eternal ballroom. This is a huge ballroom with two doors on each end. One leads to the main hall and the other one leads to the boiler room. It has this art deco table. It has a table in the center and it's illuminated by a large chandelier and there's just something so unsettling about being the only person in a gigantic room. So once you go through one of the doors, you go to the boiler room and this room is a series of large cobwebbed hallways with high ceilings and concrete walls and apparently these long corridors are hot and dry and there's a constant smell of smoke in the air and many people that have entered this level have reported the sounds of whispers from the large boilers that almost appear to have faces and there are currently three elevators that reside 
died in the boiler room that looked like they came from the early 1900s and apparently these elevators should be avoided at all costs. Living statues even reside in this part of level 5 and if you see one while exploring the boiler room, you need to get out of there as soon as possible. And you're supposed to keep eye contact with them as you run because looking away while you're running can result in you being attacked by the statue. This level is just known to make people go crazy. There is this constant buzz of iridescent while walking through this level and people have also reported the sounds of faint jazz music and the distant party chatter. This place is just infamous for its mysterious whispering and unseen presences. People often report hearing something whispering incoherently behind them and feeling taps on their shoulders. There's apparently even face-like wallpaper and if you stare at it for too long, it can cause you to lose your sanity. So you definitely need a lot of almond water while you're on this level just to protect your sanity. And those who have gone insane on this level speak of this entity known as the Beast of Level 5 and they describe him as this tall, scaly, humanoid being wearing a suit and tie with tentacles around his mouth. People claim he has camouflaging abilities and they say his glowing eyes stare at them out from the wallpaper. Now, it's unknown whether or not this beast is a hallucination or real because it could just be people seeing things after being on this level for way too long. Okay, and then we have level 6 and this level is called Lights Out. This level is apparently made out of metallic walls, brick floors, and once again, a complex system of piping. But the entirety of level 6 is shrouded in complete darkness and so far, no light sources have ever successfully created any light on the level. So due to how dark this level actually is, it is not possible to take sufficient photographs of it. So unfortunately, I don't have much to show you because all the pictures are just completely dark. Auditory hallucinations are frequently experienced in level 6, ranging from rushing water to indecipherable voices ringing throughout the piping. It is also believed that level 6 may be able to influence one's perception of reality, resulting in symptoms of paranoia and de realization. Despite possessing no known tangible threats, level 6 is still regarded as being one of the most dangerous levels in the back rooms, mostly because of the sheer darkness. So a significant portion of the wanderers who end up on this level permanently lose their sanity or just go missing forever. It's really unknown how many entities lurk around this level because it's just too dark. They're literally unable to be seen. There could be tons, there could be none, there could be just a small amount. And they say that if you wander for long enough and you're lucky, you will be able to find level 7. Now, level 7 is called Thalassophobia, which if you've seen some of my fear videos from a couple years ago, that is the fear of large bodies of water. So you'll have to tune in next time for my next Backrooms video to find out more about that level and more levels after that. So let's get right into talking about level 7, which like I said in the previous video, this is called the Lassophobia. Level 7 is unique in that it is a vast expanse of water that appears to stretch on endlessly. Nobody thus far has fully explored level 7, but what is currently known is that the first and potentially only room of level 7 is not flooded and has the usual fluorescent lighting. Apparently this room has a very thin layer of water on the bottom of it. And and what's strange is that the room is rotated horizontally, but gravity still works to keep one's feet on the floor. The water here is apparently very cold, and it is definitely unadvised to enter it. And the floor of the ocean is made up of carpet instead of sand, and apparently it's hardened by this thick layer of tar. There are also several skeletons in this water, along with humanoid figures and massive fish, and little else is known known about the depths of the waters aside from the endless expanse of tar and bones. And it is said that an underwater-like hole is located somewhere in the carpeted ocean and that will lead to level 8. But a more practical way of exiting this level is through a double-sided door with a no exit sign, so I'd prefer to go that way. And that's all that's known about this level. I was hoping there'd be more, but it's just a lot of water. You do not want to be here. Then we have level 8, which is called the 
the cave system. Level 8 is an expansive cave system with numerous spider-like entities inhabiting it. It is pitch black without proper light sources, and there's many nests that spiders made, most inhabited by small venomous spiders and massive king and queen spiders. Apparently the king spiders of these colonies are not venomous, but the queen spiders are very venomous, like people die within seconds of being bitten. And there's so much more that is unknown about these caves and spiders, and human exploration of this level is obviously impossible. Large clear pools can be found in dead ends of the cave, and these pools are highly dangerous as anything that enters them gets torn apart and dragged down by these humanoid black tar hands. There's actually another nest that could be found amongst these caves, and those belong to what's called Franken spiders, and these are basically dangerous, mutated spiders that can regenerate themselves after they die. So if their corpse is lying there, a new spider will literally come out of the chest, if that makes sense. And certain areas of the cave have what is presumed to be almond water dripping from the stalactites on the ceiling. There are also some areas in level 8 that are inhabited by brown spiders, and apparently these are very unique to the back rooms. These spiders are also found in nests, and they guard the these very large egg sacs containing hundreds of newborn spiders. Now with these spiders, the males are also not venomous, but the females can grow to be over a meter long. Do you guys know how big that is? And apparently if they bite you, they can completely wipe your memory. It will also paralyze you and they will eat you over a period of a day or two. Other than the spiders, other backrooms entities inhabit these cave systems. However, they stay clear of the spiders as well, who seem to be the apex predators of the level. So these spiders go after everyone, like the backroom's entities and humans. Apparently, if you make yourself trip and fall, you will be transported to level 9. But apparently, you also have a 0.004% chance you could be transported to level 153, but it's very rare. Then we have level 9, which is called Darkened Suburbs. Level 9 is a seemingly endless suburban landscape, with the time of day being locked to midnight. The houses in this level vary in design and size, although there are reports of spotting two houses near each other that are the exact same. The houses of level 9 appear to be furnished and fairly new, containing items present in typical houses such as sofas, televisions, beds, refrigerators, vast backyards containing a wide amount of vegetation, but in rare circumstances, some houses have been observed to be entirely void of any of these features and completely barren. And most electronic devices that you may find in these houses don't work because of the absence of a valid power source in the back rooms. Now, the streets of level 9 are the most dangerous aspect of this level. The wet, unpainted asphalt roads take on the consistency of quicksand, and if you walk on them, you will become quickly submerged and trapped. Now, the stone sidewalks that line these roads don't appear to have that quicksand property, but apparently you should still avoid walking on them in case you trip and fall into the road. The street lamp, blah, blah. The street lamps lining the level are typically powered off and inactive, though some bizarrely flicker despite the absence of power. And there are a lot of entities that lurk on this level, such as smilers, skin eaters. There are some we haven't even spoken about yet, like death moths, clumps, death rats, and lurkers. So death moths are giant moths that inhabit the back rooms, and while the male death moths are mostly harmless and possibly even tameable, the females are several sizes larger, and apparently they can spit acid and they're super hostile. Now death moths are attracted to light, so if you hear fluttering wings nearby, turn off all devices, no flashlights, don't even go near any light source. Then we have what are called clumps, and these are very hostile entities and they appear to be clumps of arms all together in groups, and the arms flail about and extend in every direction, and they are known to inhabit vents, 
cabinets and other tight spaces. Now the pictures I'm showing you are from the artist Trevor Henderson, but those are sort of what it would look like in the back rooms. Then we have death rats, and these are just rats that inhabit the back rooms. Their appearance is gray skin, brown tails, red eyes, and they are highly, highly intelligent. Then there are the creatures called lurkers, and these are basically nothing more than two glowing eyes, and they sort of vary in color, and they're surrounded by black fog. Lurkers are extremely similar and might even be related to smilers, and that you will always see them in the dark, but instead of them staying in dark areas, there is a dark fog that follows them wherever they go, allowing them to move anywhere freely. And if you see a lurker, they will attack immediately. Then we have level 10, which is called Field of Wheat. Level 10 includes a seemingly infinite grassland of wheat with an unpaved soil road permanently leading off towards the horizon. There's also a long forgotten blood-stained wooden fence that surrounds the area. It also seems to be permanently cloudy and rainy, and there are these small pouches of almond water enhanced by the sugar of the wheat harvests, and they can just be found all over the place nearby. What's really strange about this level is that there are several humanoid guards that are holding bow and arrows that seem to be protecting the wheat production, and upon sighting one, you'll suddenly hear this trumpet sound, and this flare of arrows will come raining down on you. Aside from the limited abundance of wheat existing, people have found other things hiding amongst the grass, like knives, empty containers of liquid, rotten food, flashlights, and cell phones, which obviously have dead batteries, they don't work. And the faint tone of crying and formless singing can frequently be listened to in the level, and is speculated to be related with the disappearances of a significant amount of wanderers, as the field acts as a maze. So it is believed that those people who have been here and have gotten lost have disintegrated into the dirt, which fertilizes the wheat harvests. Now there are apparently two different kinds of entities on this level. The first are the archers that I spoke about. They live in these giant stone towers that has furniture looking like it came from the 7th century, and they are protecting the harvests and will shoot you with arrows if they see you. And then there are these entities called gluffs, and they are apparently giant balls of fat that kind of look like humanoid tumors, and they just frolic around the wheat fields, and they sweat out almond water that helps to feed all the wheat and the grass. And apparently they can also help you get to level 10 if you're lost. They can talk and understand the human language, and you can ask them any question about the level that you want, but you cannot ask them general questions about the back rooms as a whole. For example, if you ask them how were the back rooms made, they will reply with something like, I cannot answer that. Another random fact is that there is a group of 73 people that permanently reside on this level that are obsessed with finding an angel there, and they think that if they find this angel, it will return them to the real world. Now there's this really creepy note that was apparently recovered from a missing wanderer that was never found, and I'm gonna read what the note says. I've been walking for six days and there's been nothing but this dirt road and the fields surrounding it. I discovered this delectable substance tasting almost like almond water in the fields on multiple occasions. It tastes sweet. There seems to be something roaming in the mist, but I've been incapable to get a clear photo of it yet. It doesn't appear to resemble anything currently on our databases. Do not leave the path. Do not. Upon the sounds of trumpets roaring in the distance and a loud voice echoing fire, a flurry of arrows can be seen. I've been hit by three or four. I've lost tally of how many arrows hit me. I'm still bleeding, and it doesn't look like medical attention's arriving any soon. Of course not. It looks like I'm gonna perish here. No, everything is calm. Everything is fine. It's completely silent. She saved me. An angel appeared in the sky, trumpet in hand. And that's how the note ends, so it's super, super eerie. So the next level is called Endless City. So tune in for next time, because I'll be talking about a few more levels. So last video, we left off on Backrooms level 11, and this level is called Endless City. Apparently level 11 is similar to level nine in size and structure, but instead of having tons and tons of endless houses, this is populated with office buildings, apartments, and various other buildings. It is also cluttered with parks, plazas, and metro stations, and the time on level 11 is 
always noon, which makes it really hard to sleep because it's always sunny. There are multiple nuclear power plants through this level and are usually present exactly 40,000 kilometers apart, and these plants do not appear to be operational. Theories affirm that they were abandoned a long, long time ago. And although level 11 may seem stationary, the buildings actually move when they're out of sight. This place seems to be constantly shifting and explorers have reported buildings moving hundreds of feet while out of sight. So when you can't see the buildings or when you look away from them, they will literally rapidly move around, which is so creepy. So you might see one building in one place and like look back again five minutes later and that building is like hundreds of kilometers down the road. Facelings are extremely common on this level and you'll see both adult and child facelings. And they seem to be pretty neutral towards travelers, at least just on this level. In fact, they act like ordinary human beings and typically won't bug you. And pigeons can also be seen on this level, but it's not what you expect. Backrooms pigeons are quite different from the ones that we know here in the real world. And the first time they were discovered was in 1922. They disguised themselves as being normal pigeons, but their true form is this large, fleshy humanoid covered in feathers. It's actually quite terrifying. And they always travel and hunt in groups, and after they catch their victims, they give them a single punch to the head to knock them out, and then they feast on their remains. So yeah, just stay far, far away from pigeons on this level and any other level. It is said that you should just ignore them, keep your distance, don't maintain eye contact with them, never attempt to scare them away, and definitely don't walk into a group of pigeons. That is probably the strangest warning that we've had so far during the Backroom series. Okay, so then we have a very weird level 12. This one is called Matrix. And level 12 is said to be one of the least understood levels in the Backrooms. It is a tiny lit room with a table situated in the center and a chair behind it tucked under the table. And the chair and table are almost identical to the white room, making them sort of difficult to see. And this room is very small. It's literally 10 foot by 10 foot by 10 foot. And occasionally this loud thud can be heard from the other side of one of the walls, indicating that this level might be actually larger than just the box that you're in. And apparently if you exit this level, you'll forget all memories of it after five minutes. It's just bizarre. This place is so strange. Then we have level 13, which is called Overheat. Level 13 appears to be an infinite jungle with a cabin serving as a spawn location. This jungle has no animals, it only has insects that are very aggressive, the worst of them being wasps, and they just make this level very difficult to live on. The fruits here are also very poisonous and can spread this very dangerous plague that can only be cured by drinking something called neon water. Also, the water in the rivers and lakes will always boil and the climate is so hot that it can be fatal. So anyone who's trying to traverse this level has to wear protective armor that has a cooling system. And the sun can also blind you after four seconds of looking at it. So it's just, it's a very, very dangerous level. And the cabin in the middle of this jungle is abandoned, overgrown and destroyed, lacking furniture. Apparently this cabin has two floors. The bottom floor resembles a living room, but it's completely destroyed. And then the stairs leading up to floor two are destroyed as well and very dangerous because the wood falls apart constantly. And there's only two rooms on the top floor. One is a completely empty room, the other one is a bedroom, and both of the doors are destroyed. The bed is soaking wet, the pillows are moldy, the furniture is destroyed as well. And the only safe place you can go on this level is called the underground. And you can get there by going down the basement stairs of the cabin, and it leads to this cave that is rich in water and plants and where you don't need to worry about the heat or being burned. So yeah, if you ever go on this level, get to the basement immediately because it takes you to this wonderful other world that is safe. <laughs> and then we have level 14, which is called Military Hospital. Level 14 is an old 
old abandoned military hospital dating back to the 1800s that is currently in a deteriorated state as a result of aging. And what is so disgusting is that contaminated water containing bodily fluids leaks from the pipes and they pool on the floor. So you're gonna wanna avoid all that water. The ceiling has completely degraded and the walls can really no longer hold it. So it is said that you should be very cautious while navigating this level because pieces of the ceiling can just collapse and crush wanderers. And the windows in this level will almost always show a foggy void and it rarely shows the real world. Sometimes they actually show other levels of the back rooms if you look through them. There was this one wanderer who actually reported being able to see level 44 from one of the windows. But there is also a warning saying you should just avoid windows in general because they are apparently very dangerous. Bones and decomposed human organs are frequently seen on the floor, but researchers cannot determine who they belong to. And there are ghosts that wander around this level, resembling doctors and patients and nurses. But apparently they don't really pay any attention to the wanderers. They just walk by you and don't really care. But be aware of the fact that despite being apparitions, they can operate tangible objects, which can collide with wanderers injuring them. And it is also said that you should consider staying away if you ever see objects moving by themselves because it is the ghosts that are doing that. And although they don't want to intentionally harm you, if they're walking around with like surgical tools, they might like poke you with them. The ghost's ability to effectively operate in this hospital means that they may randomly switch on or off the lights, trigger fire alarms, and speak in old English. So if you hear distant echoey voices in this hospital while you're there, it's most likely not another wanderer and it's probably one of the ghosts. There's also this really creepy creature on this level called Dr. Pollock, and unlike the other doctors, he does not appear to be a ghost, but instead he is this deformed gray humanoid thing. He wears complete proper doctor attire, he has a stethoscope around his neck, he has a name tag that says Dr. Pollock, but his right hand is replaced with a massive syringe, apparently containing tranquilizer fluid. This means that he is able to pose an actual threat to wanderers, so upon seeing someone who doesn't look like a doctor, he will start giving chase, ordering the trespasser to stop disrupting the operation of the hospital. And if he catches up to you, he will inject you with this tranquilizer fluid, which will make you unconscious, and then he will then drag you to his operating table to start performing all of his really disturbing procedures. Now apparently there are these 12 specific doctors who are trapped on this level, and apparently they're from the 1940s to 2006, and they will guide wanderers to the exits. They will also give out free lab coats to any wanderers they encounter to help protect them from Dr. Pollock, because if you're wearing a doctor lab coat, he'll just think that you belong there. And they also have first aid kits on hand in case anybody gets hurt. So these 12 doctors are good. You want to meet them. You want to encounter them. Any all right guys, so we left off at level 15 and this one is called Futuristic Halls. Level 15 is a maze-like labyrinth of hallways with futuristic architecture and technology. And what's interesting is that to date, there have been no two wanderers on this level who have been able to meet up. People just aren't able to make contact here. You're always gonna be alone because on some levels, you'll like meet up with other wanderers, you'll run into them, you'll find them somewhere, not here you're always gonna be alone. Long LED lights are present on the ceiling of each hallway, serving as the only source of luminescence in the level. And there have been reports of the lights sparking, flickering, and even shorting out completely. During these outages, areas of the level become pitch black while a constant sound of distant whirring machinery becomes audible. And the sources of these machinery sounds are unknown. Some wanderers say it emanates from the floor, others say it comes from the ceiling, and witnesses frequently report lightheadedness and dizziness after sustained exposure to the harsh lighting and stale air present on this level. And apparently these effects that you feel are increased in areas that are in total darkness. So it's recommended that if any of the lights completely go out, you should exit that area immediately, find more light because those effects will be awful on you. Occasionally, one may stumble on a worn down control panel with wires connecting to the floor 
more. And most have between 10 and 20 buttons. Apparently the only working buttons are ones that say on, off, destroy, and change. Pushing the destroy button apparently creates an explosion, unleashing this deafening boom, causing the nearby hallways to shake uncontrollably. Fortunately though, this only lasts for about seven seconds. What's really strange though is that there have been no reports of any damage happening from these explosions. So it either fixes itself really quickly or it's just the sound that's really impacting. Now the change button has never been pressed and according to witnesses it emits this sort of magnetic field like a force field which doesn't allow people to actually get close enough to press this button which is really frustrating because we have no idea what it would do. And then wanderers have speculated that very occasionally so very rarely this button will come up that says escape and if you press that button it will transport you to level 16. Okay so then we have level 16 and this one is called labyrinth cluster. Level 16 is a large well-lit labyrinth with five floors and all floors besides the first floor consists of the same flooring, layout, and lighting. Now there are apparently eight staircases across all of these levels and exits can be found on all levels except for level five. Each floor apparently has the same number of entities and they're all extremely territorial and they also always remain in groups. And the indestructible lights found on floors two to five are harmful to look at. Apparently they have the same effects as if you were looking directly at the sun and touching any lights on this floor will give you unbearable burns. They say the damages are similar to fourth degree burns. And traveling upwards or downwards around these floors is really difficult because apparently the lights are right next to the stairs. So you have to walk by them to go up or down and some people get really burnt. Floor one is drastically different from the rest. It is the only floor to not be illuminated by lights. It is recommended to bring light sources such as lanterns and flashlights if you are going to explore this floor. Then we have level 17 which is called cargo ship. Level 17 appears to be the interior of a cargo ship spanning hundreds of thousands of square kilometers with a majority of the level being composed of corridors and stairwells and occasionally one may come across a flooded hallway. Now there's barely any entities on this level, but there is one creature that you may come across that is exclusive to level 17. Now these creatures are called imprints, and they appear identical to the wanderers who have explored this level previously, and they mimic the exact movements that those explorers did. So they are just like entities that appear to be humans, and they almost reenact the memories of those wanderers who have been here, if that makes sense. And while they're not physically dangerous in any way, looking at an imprint can apparently cause an immense amount of stress. And if you look at one directly in the eyes, it's able to put you into a comatose state. And heading up several flights of stairs will eventually bring you to the upper floors of level 17. And while appearing to have glass windows and doors with light coming from them, apparently they cannot be opened, they could not be broken. And apparently standing directly in this light can cause you to suffocate. And this will persist until you move out of the light. So a lot of light on all of these levels are really bad. Same with windows. Then we have level 18, which is called Memories. Level 18 resembles a familiar place from one's childhood memory when they were no more than 10 years old. Wanderers have reported the level's appearance being that of daycares, preschools, bedrooms, playgrounds, and classrooms. And every traveler will see something different and the setting that the level decides on will be devoid of life. And if the wanderer can't remember Remember any childhood memories, then the level will match what the wanderer's earliest memory is. Level 18 will change form frequently, cycling between many different settings from your childhood. And unfortunately, it will also replay the most embarrassing moments from your life, as well as mistakes you made, regrets that you have. Even if you thought that you had long forgotten those times, they will appear before you on this level. The saying on this level actually says, level 18 always remembers it never forgets, which is really creepy and unfortunate. I don't want to see my embarrassing moments again. Now on this level, there are no immediate threats to your life, even though the traumatic events from your life may resurface. But because of this, a lot of people go insane here because they forget what's real and what's not. They think they've somehow gone back in time and are actually back in their childhoods. While it is recommended that wanderers avoid this level because of the potential for certain triggers to take form and cause mental breakdowns, some brave individuals stay on level 18.
2018, and they just fully immersed themselves in this nostalgic experience. However, it is said that when these individuals eventually leave this level, they come out with an entirely different personality. And in some cases, permanent physical alterations can even be seen in their brain scans. There's another quote from this level that says, come play with us. You're never going to get any older while stuck in the back rooms. And on level 18, there is this very rare entity that can be seen. And he actually helps guide wanderers through this floor. So he's kind of good in a way. And this entity is called the plush dino. And he literally resembles a dinosaur plushie. And this plushie is sentient and capable of movement. And as you go around this floor, you'll see him just like walking around. And apparently he induces happy emotions in you. And he will appear before you giving you food and water to just help you on this level. He sounds so cute. Like I feel like I would want to meet him. Then we have level 19, which is called crawl space. And for some reason, I feel like this level would be the most scary to me because crawl spaces really freaked me out. If you remember me living in my old house, I did so many videos about the crawl space I had there and no thank you, did not like it. Level 19 consists of a very large attic with cobwebs. There are several light bulbs hanging down from the ceiling by thin wiring and male death moths can often be found lying around them. These lights have been said to have a mild hypnotic effect, which causes wanderers to lose awareness of their surroundings. And there are also apparently a lot of death rats on this level as well, which is really gross. The floor here is very brittle and made of old rotten wood that breaks really easily. So due to this, it is recommended that you traverse this level very, very carefully as you have a very high risk of falling through the floor if you do not. It is said that entities or objects weighing more than approximately 170 pounds will most likely break through the floor on this level, which means that most humans can't really walk on this level, which is terrifying. Other than this, very little information is known about this level as its size has yet to be determined. And apparently the primary method of escape from this level is to find a rusted damaged door in an area of the level with a higher roof than the rest of it. And if you push open this door, it will lead you to level 20. <laughs> 20 is called warehouse. Level 20 appears to be a warehouse approximately 200 to 300 kilometers wide in total. Some lights flicker on and off and it can be hours before they come back on again with some areas being in complete darkness. There's also this sticky oil-like substance that coats the floors of most rooms. It's usually either pooling on the floor in puddles or leaking down from cracks in the roof and interspersed between rooms are corridors filled with boxes, crates, and racks of all kinds. And there's this warning telling wanderers not to open any of the boxes or crates that you see. Because apparently once it opens, this extremely bright light will come out of the box, causing permanent blindness to anyone who opened it. And apparently this light can be seen for miles and miles in this warehouse. And obviously with bright lights, it can also attract many creatures on this level. So after one of these boxes have been opened, you've been blinded, the light finally goes out. Apparently it's filled with many, many dangerous items. And there's another warning saying that if you see any bottles containing fluids in these boxes, no matter what the brand is, even if you recognize it, even if it looks like water or pop or juice, do not drink it. Because apparently what's inside of it is the same oil that's all over the floors. And that's obviously dangerous to drink. There are also many facelings on this level, just walking around through the aisles. And you might also find these creatures called insanities. And insanities are humans who have been mutated into red-skinned zombie-like creatures by the effects of insanity, and they always walk around carrying these really dangerous weapons with them. And the easiest way to get to level 21 is to locate a corridor without any lights on. So then we have level 21, which is called Numbered Doors. And unfortunately, I won't be able to tell you guys much about this level because all of the information is either unconfirmed or unknown. Some say it's a warehouse full of toys from your childhood. Others say it's a long hallway with endless numbered doors. No one is really certain. So we have no other choice but to move on to the next level. This one is level 22 called Abandoned Parking Lot. Level 22 appears to be an abandoned parking garage with yellow support beams, lots of ash and dust from destroyed objects, and almost all the cars are broken. Some of these cars can be accessed, but it is highly recommended not to enter any 
many of them that can't produce light. So when you enter a car with a shattered light, an unknown entity will appear in the back seat of the car that you entered, which is terrifying. It's like one of those horror movies where you look in the rear view mirror and there's a ghost in the back seat. And this mysterious entity has the ability to distort reality. It can also completely distort the laws of physics. So when you see the entity get out of the car as fast as you can, and as soon as you exit the car, the abilities of the entity cannot reach you. You have to run as fast as you can, get far away. And what's crazy is that each floor of this parking garage spans 500 kilometers. Apparently destroying a functioning car will lead you to the next level. That next level is level 23 called hospital room. Level 23 is seemingly a normal room, similar to that of a small modern hospital room, consisting of little more than a heart rate monitor and a small injector with a blood bag attached to it. And due to unknown circumstances, the level is arranged so that only one wanderer can enter the room at a time. There's also this creature on this level called the one that I loved. And it's this featureless humanoid thing that enters the room. And upon its entry, you'll watch as it transforms into someone that you love who has passed. They'll have the same voice as them, they'll look the same, you'll have the same memories, and you'll have to watch as they eventually die once again in the hospital bed, and all attempts to prevent the untimely death of the entity have been proven futile. And as soon as you see this entity in the room, you'll have this sense of relaxation because it looks like a family member that you used to know. You'll have this feeling of happiness trying to reminisce and catch up with this lost family member. And then once this entity passes away, you'll be able to move on to the next level. So level 24 is called Rocky Expanse. And this level explanation will also be very brief because it's so difficult to describe and there's literally no photos of it. It seems to be a rocky expanse surrounded by this black void with a background view of what appears to be planet Earth. I guess this level seems to be located in space and there's a lack of breathable air on this level, leading those who stumble upon it to suffocate to death. Then we have level 25, which is called Anomaly. And this is another level with information that we're not allowed to access. Apparently it's a restricted area. Only authorized individuals are allowed to enter and spacesuits are also required for entry. So this is another bizarre level. It's so strange how many in a row we're not allowed to talk about. And then we have level 26, which is called Forest of Psychosis. Level 26 is a huge rainforest with strange properties. The rainforest has purple leaves and grass, bodies of water that can pull you down into the depths, and the gravity is inverted in some areas of the rainforest. And the leaves, just like in our reality, produce a gas and release it into the air. But instead of oxygen, it's this unknown gas. And while this gas is breathable, it also makes you have auditory and visual hallucinations. These hallucinations are unintelligible whispering sounds, visions of dark shadow humanoids, or sounds and visions of your old memories from back home. And these hallucinations hallucinations will eventually make you go insane unless you find your way to the next level. Level 26 is locked in daytime and has a chance to rain for a random amount of time despite there being no clouds in the sky. And apparently the rain is safe to drink, but you can't have large amounts of it in one time or you'll faint. So they say you shouldn't drink more than a liter in three hours. There's also something called sinking water and it's water that pulls you in and it'll be extremely hard for you to swim back up. And if it's shallow water, it will magically make itself deeper until it's about 10 to 15 feet deep. So obviously it's recommended that you avoid ponds, puddles, and rivers entirely. Then there's this weird thing called flip zones. And flip zones are the areas in the forest with inverted gravity. So going into a flip zone is extremely dangerous due to the fact that it's very hard to get out of without the right tools. And taking too long to get out of this area will make you rise up into the atmosphere where you're unable to breathe. So this forest just has so many dangerous things associated with it and it's even worse while you're hallucinating so you do not want to go here or if you do get to the next level immediately. <laughs> But I had this nightmare that it's so funny because Mandy remembers it just as well as I remember it. Oh yeah. It was a nightmare that I had about this entity called the Flute Man. And I've definitely mentioned this on like my YouTube probably years ago, but it was this creepy thing. I woke up in the morning and I told Mandy right away. 
and like this dream was like vivid and it was about this creepy man it was like a tall thin older man who walked in our house um, playing the flute and it reminded me of like the Pied Piper you know how like he goes and he plays the flute and all these kids follow him they're almost like hypnotized by his music it's like an old fairy tale yeah so this man walks in our house and like in the dream I'm having, like, I picture the front of our house, I picture, like, the staircase, like, our whole entire, like, outline of the house. He walks in, he's playing this beautiful, like, but haunting flute music. And I come out of my room and I look over the staircase at him and he's playing this flute and, like, I don't remember exactly what happens next, but I think we had our cousins over and they were all following him. And I was like, what are you guys doing? Like, where are you going? And I'm trying to hide in, like, a bathroom. And he ends up going down into the basement and our cousins are following him and it was just a really eerie dream and i remember scaring you and you were like stop talking about this because it was just so creepy and that was so long ago too oh yeah we were i was probably like eight or nine like i was young and we like still remember that dream yeah